Hello there friends and welcome for today's Pathfinder Enhanced Set video we have a Primal Druid Legend build so we'll be double the nature character with both Druid and also Ranger. This build is a request from one of my newest channel members, thank you so much for the extra support friend. If you're looking for the ultimate dragon shifter possible, that's the way to go. We can change into any of the animal forms, but most importantly, the dragon ones of course through the shape change spell. For the most absurd physical scores possible we will get 76 to 78 strength, for great boosts to attack raw and damage especially when further boosted by the legend mythic path. Even armor class wise you can still achieve a decent amount too, despite being a massive dragon. And of course you'll get to specialize into multiple natural attacks at once. We have 2 bites, 2 claws, 1 gore, 1 tail slap and 2 wing hits. While the damage under shapeshifting might not be as high as some other builds, it's certainly very viable and very fun. Especially when further boosted by the OP angel, defensive buffs like Fortress of the Faithful, and damage boosting ones through Sun Marked. So without further ado, let us get into our Druid Legend Shapeshifter Guide. For this shapeshifting character we'll be going Druid, and as far as the archetype, I want to return to Primal Druid. You can of course go with Elemental Rampager, which does have some bonuses with natural attacks, it's just that they don't have access to a path, which I find a cardinal sin to be fair. I do have one prepared for this archetype that I'll post later on, but for now, I would rather stick to Primal Druid. You are limited to only the ancient pets like the Dinosaurs, the Mastodon and so on, which isn't that much of a downside. But most importantly, you'll have the Enlarged Person spell added for free to your spellbook. Druids cannot cast this by default. As a matter of fact, their level 1 spells overall aren't that good compared to, let's say, Wizard or Sorcerer. On the other hand, Enlarged Person is one of the best early game buffs and will last you for quite a while. You'll get even higher bonuses from Enlarged Person when applied to yourself at level 8 for double the amount, something only Brown Fur Transmuters can do otherwise, and even triple at level 16. Besides that, they don't really lose anything important, and they still retain the ability to fully shapeshift into all of the forms. For race, I'll be going with the classic human. Druids are somewhat fit starved, right? They don't have any bonus fit whatsoever. So the extra fit from human will help us a lot. For background you have two choices, you can go with the classic Street Urchin and Pickpocket for the bonus shoe initiative, or because druids don't have the best weapon proficiencies, and we don't really want to get martial weapons since we'll be shape-shifting soon enough, our first form is right at level 4, the Wolf. What you can do for until then is pick Warrior and Mercenary for Long Spear proficiency. Long Spears are rich weapons, so they will serve you very well early on, especially because you can then cast Enlarged Person as a Primal Druid for double the reach, at least until you can become a wolf at level 4. On the other hand, you can also just equip a Scimitar and cast Enlarged Person for reach anyway, so the choice is up to you, either Mercenary or Pickpocket. As far as ability scores, Strength is our main stat by far, we are actually starting with 20 since we'll be going with Legend, who can increase this even further later on. Plus this pretty much ensures your character, well, has the highest chances of hitting enemies early on. Now, if you're used to Dungeons & Dragons 3rd edition, shapeshifting works differently in Pathfinder. In D&D 3rd edition, well, the form's physical scores will replace your characters. For Pathfinder it's different, you'll just get a bonus added on top of what stats you already have, which is why we want high strength. 12 dexterity is more than enough, this character will have reach even under forms, so AC won't really matter much. I would then dump Charisma, it's completely useless for our build and honestly, druids are usually the grumpy hermit kind of character, so it fits. Intelligence can be dumped to around 8 too, we already have a bonus from being a human anyways. Then I would go for 15 wisdom. The main reason is so we aren't as reliant on headbands to cast all of our spells. We only need 19 for all of them eventually, so we can cast level 9 spells. But since we'll be merging with Angel before we become a legend, we'll get very fast spellcasting progression. This means access to level 9 spells even at chapter 3. Usually that's when you can find plus 4 headbands, 
When you add it on top of 15 wisdom, we have 19, enough to cast all of the spells just in time. Besides that, you might as well go for 14 constitution, or you can go for 12 and 14 dexterity, it's up to you. I prefer constitution, especially as a legend for huge hit points, higher than even 1000 later on. As far as skill points, athletics because of our super high strength. And then the two classic druid skills, lore nature and perception, as we have decent enough wisdom. Through Legend we can increase these skills even further and even get another one later on. As far as your level 1 feats, well, the classic, power attack, and then cleave. By default, Druids can only get a second attack at level 8. So having double your attacks per round as early as level 1, to me it's simply way too good and makes the early game a lot more fun. But you can of course change it to something else if you prefer. Even your first shape-shifting form, the Wolf, also only has but a single attack per round, so cleave will work too. As far as your animal companion, I really wanted to go with the Triceratops, because I've never covered it before, but sadly it's bugged at the moment. Its gore attacks do not trip, despite the fact they are supposed to. So I'd much rather just go for the Smilodon. This big kitty has 5 entire attacks just at level 1, it really is that crazy. Usually the more buffs you have, the better the Smilodon will become, because the further these attacks will be empowered. For Deity, I'll be going with Gosre, who is the main god of nature, and then, since for the first part of this build we'll have to be an angel, neutral, good. Let's give our character a hermit, druid beard, and we can start. Every level and then you'll get another skill as a human if you went with 8 intelligence. You might as well put it anywhere you want, like let's say persuasion, because later through legend it will become a class skill. It's not needed, you can go with anything else too. Including the classic use magic device to use scrolls from other classes. Including something like stealth, since we don't really need armor, as we are soon going to be shape shifting anyways. For level 3, the classic cleaving finish for yet another attack whenever we kill an enemy. This one is amazing for any form you have, including the animals and the dragon ones. Who doesn't want extra attacks after all? At level 4, be sure to increase strength which is also what you want to raise on all of the other levels, including all of the legend extra levels. For level 5, you have two choices. I prefer to go with combat reflexes, because we won't have space for it later on. Otherwise, you can also pick the shapeshifting exclusive feat, Natural Spell. This lets you cast spells while under the animal forms. By default, animals cannot cast spells. The thing is, later on, when we get shape change, which is very early with this build, at around chapter 3, because of the angel merge, we will be able to fully transform into the best of the dragon forms, and the dragons as innate spellcasters, well, they can cast spells by default. Second, because this character only cares mostly for buffs, as far as the animal forms, you can just cast the buffs before changing into them, so I don't think natural spell is as needed. The only spell you probably want to cast in animal form is greater magic fang or magic fang, but you can just equip amulets of natural attack for the same effect. So to me, combat reflexes, especially because this build won't really have the space for the ever-ready mythic ability, at least not so early. For level 7, you probably already know where I'm going. Outflank is the must-have, no matter if you are melee ranged, or even a shapeshifter with natural attacks. For level 9, the classic lunge. We want as high reach as possible, even under the animal forms. Forms like the dragon are already big by themselves, but with lunge you get even higher reach. For level 11 what you want is improved critical and then bite. It's very important that you first pick bite. The main reason is all of the forms pretty much, including even the dragon ones, have a bite as their primary attack. Whenever you cast the haste spell for example, you'll get another bite. But most importantly all of your attacks of opportunity should also come as bites. And when buffing your weapon with most effects, they're also going to be applied to the bite only. So it is in your best interest to invest in this as early as you can. For level 13, while you could potentially get started into the Shattered Defenses package, because this build is merging with Angel, and at this point we would already have level 9 spells, including Angel spells, including the Dragon forms, all the OP Angel stuff, I really don't think you need Shattered Defenses so early. So to me, I would rather specialize now into the other natural attacks. First with Improved Critical and Claw. Most of the forms have multiple Claw attacks, including the Dragon ones. For level 15, since we are soon becoming a legend who gets an absurd amount of extra feats, 
I would keep specializing into more natural attacks. Other natural weapons for our wings as a dragon. At this point, because you already have level 9 spells as an angel, you can also go for the bolster metamagic feat. The reason is so that you can then get more use of some spells like Storm of Justice, because level 9 druid spells are kind of poor overall. Extend spell can also work for such a purpose. You can even pick them at 13 and delay Claw for later on. For level 17, because I didn't pick it before, I would go for a bolster spell, but like I said, you can also pick Extend instead. It's just for extra spellbook flexibility. For level 19, well, you might as well get another natural attack critical. So improve at critical. Sadly, dragons don't have tentacles yet. Hopefully that will change with the shifter DLC. But anyways, what we are missing now is tail. We do have a tail slap. And I know it might seem like a waste to have so many improved criticals, but like I said, the dragon forms have a lot of different attacks. And we are going legend, we have the feats to spare. Alright, now let's cover mythic progression for our druid legend. As far as the first ascension, close to the abyss without a doubt, for the extra gore attack. This will stack with all of our other forms, since they don't really have a gore attack by default. Then for your first mythic ability, well, we are mainly a shapeshifting build, so master shapeshifter is the way to go. This way, all of our physical scores will be boosted by a further plus 4. You can really increase your stats by a lot through this. As a legend, you can really only get a mythic feat now and that's it, and I recommend you go for mythic power attack. Legends can increase their base attack bonus way higher than any other mythic, by double even. And the extra damage boost from power attack is directly tied to your base attack bonus progression. Since we have a lot of natural attacks per round, we'll also get a lot of static damage added to our hits. If you're wondering about how to progress while you're still an angel, it can go in two different ways. Assuming you don't want to respect this character before becoming a legend, for Mythic 3, 4 and 5 is when you would pick all of the abundant casting line, because you'll be merging with Angel and you want as many spell slots as possible. Sure, you'll lose them as a legend, but you know, that's way later. If you don't care about respecting your character, I would rather already start with abundant casting as early as level 2, even Mythic 1 even and delay Master Shapeshifter, because abundant casting with Angel is that good. But anyways, otherwise just Master Shapeshifter and Mythic Power Attack. Alright, now let us get into the remaining 20 levels as a Legend Druid. For this build, I really want to go with Ranger and Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer is by default one of the best classes in the game, but Ranger as a nature class, I think it's very thematic for this character. We are both a Ranger and a Druid. And as far as I know, I remember some gods in, like, say, Dungeons and Dragons, as far as their stat sheet. They used to have dual classes, and the nature gods sometimes went with combos like this, Ranger and Druid, so I think it's pretty fun that we can also do something similar. It doesn't need any saying that Demon Slayer will add a massive amount of extra attack rolls and damage to all of your natural attacks through favorite enemy, full against all demons, which is why it's pretty handy for our build. It doesn't matter if it's a claw, a gore, a tail slap, a wing, a tentacle, the bonus from favorite enemy against all demons will apply. Plus this will also enhance your pet. Speaking about the pet, it will be kept at level 20 progression, no matter what class combination you pick now, since we already have level 20 into Primal Druid. It doesn't matter because pets are OP even just at level 20. Demon Slayer will also provide us with quite powerful spells including Lead Blades for higher damage, Sense Vitals for free sneak attack, and also instant enemy to fully apply our favorite enemy bonus against any enemy type in the game, even if they aren't demons. There are some also nice goodies like evasion and improved evasion. And amusingly enough, since we already have a maxed out pet, we can go for the ranger spawn feature instead of the pet, which lets us permanently apply half of our favorite enemy bonus against all demons to all of our party members at once. It's quite a handy ability to have. I usually don't pick it because I prefer the pet, but since we already have one, well, why not? So all of your allies will get around plus 4 to plus 5 attack and damage against all demons. Now, I also want to combine this character with yet another class, in this case the classic fighter and mutation warrior. It's really hard not to go with mutation warrior. The mutagen is amazing, especially for this character, because we can achieve super high strength as a legend. Some extra bonus feats are nice, especially the fighter exclusive ones, but it's mostly about weapon training. 
just like the Ranger's favorite enemy ability, where you can choose the natural group, which means the bonus will apply to all of your natural attacks, no matter their type. So I'll be doing 15 levels of Ranger and Demon Slayer, and then 5 of Fighter, Mutation Warrior. As a legend, you get like 15 levels right at once, so I would rather start with 5 of Mutation Warrior and then resume into Demon Slayer. For your first legend feat, well, you might as well go for Improved Initiative, as we didn't have the space for it before, and sadly we can't afford Mythic Initiative as a legend. And then just go for Weapon Focus into Bite first, as they are our primary attack. For another feat, we are actually missing one Improved Critical for our natural attacks, in this case, Gore. Yep, we do have like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 Improved Critical feats. For yet another feat, since this character has a lot of attacks per round, I'll be going for Great Cleave and later Improved Cleaving Finish for even more hits. It's not necessary, but you know, as a legend, we have the feats to spare, as always. Then at level 24, Weapon Specialization into Bite, since we can pick it as a fighter anyways. Now for the last Mutation Warrior level until Demon Slayer, and I would go for Advanced Weapon Training and Trained Initiative. The main reason is, like I said, we don't get Mythic Initiative, so we won't have as many chances of getting our Initiative to great scores. For weapon training, of course, natural attacks. Now we can finally start into Ranger and Demon Slayer. For level 27, Improved Cleaving Finish. Then, well, your Ranger combat style feats don't matter much at this point, because you have a rather limited use out of them now. I would just go for Menacing, because we can at the very least pick Shatter Defenses for free, eventually. But for the first one, you might as well go with Toughness. It has higher synergy as a legend, because of the higher levels for even more hit points. When it comes to your favorite terrain selection, honestly, at this point, it kinda doesn't matter much. It's just desert and abyss. So let's start with abyss first. For a feat at level 29, honestly, at this point, we kinda already have everything that we need, even with five improved critical feats. Something you can do is pick weapon focus into other natural attacks, like claws, and then weapon specialization, as we have five levels of fighter. But for now, in the spirit of trying out different things, I'll pick Hammer the Gap. It's not that necessary, but since we have so many natural attacks, it can be fun to have. Now be sure to go with Ranger Spawn, since we already have a full pet. Then from level 31 onwards, like I said, you can pick anything you want. Even Accomplished Sneak Attacker can work, because at this point, you already have free sneak attack from the Baphomet book. Since we went with Fighter, though, I want to get Weapon of Focus into at least Claws first, as you'll always have around 2 Claw attacks on the Ultimate Dragon form, then Menacing, and get Shattered Defenses for free. For level 33, Weapon Specialization into Claws. It's just a plus 2 to damage, but since we have the feats to spare, why not? Then go for... well... You might as well go for Urban here before Desert, since I'm pretty sure, at the very least, the City of Is during Chapter 5 should count as Urban, right? And you fight a Demon Lord there. For level 35 plus, anything. As I said before, there's always Weapon of Focus and another Weapon Specialization. I just don't think it's needed because we already have the ones we need with the biggest attacks we have, Bites and Claws. For the other ones, it's just like one attack. So I would just pick Accomplished sneak attacker here, then menacing, you can go with anything, might as well pick dodge, just because we can. For 37, honestly, as we already have everything we want, I would just pick blind fight here, it is true that druids can just cast the echolocation spell, but I think there's like a very small amount of enemies you can count them in one hand, that have consume and sources not even echolocation will remove, so for that you have blind fight. Then favorite terrain, desert. For your level 39 feet, I'll just pick Improved Blind Fight here. Then Menacing, you can go with anything. Since we have Evasion and Improved Evasion, might as well go for Lightning Reflexes. And that's it at last. Now let's get into gear for our Druid Shapeshifter Legend. For the Amulet, ultimately Velexus of course, so you can then achieve the highest strength possible. You can easily have even up to 78. Earlier, however, you can also go for the amulets that increase your natural attacks. For armor, there isn't really much of a point in wearing any armor when you're shapeshifting, as I'm pretty sure the bonuses won't transfer, unlike other stuff. For the robes and shirt, Shroud of Eternal Hunger is actually the best, because the enhancement bonus to all of your natural attacks, it actually stacks with 
Magic Fang or the Amulet of Natural Attacks. As you can see, we have plus 5 from Greater Magic Fang, and then yet another plus 4 enhancement. The Robe of the Seven Sins can also help, as this character, while we'll have the Angel spells, will lose the Merge of the Angel Boost to Caster level by being a legend, and a lot of our angel spells they scale even past 20 caster level. For belts, at first belts that increase strength, ultimately you can just go for lizard tail, if you want higher AC on your character. This belt is quite powerful for shape-shifting characters and pets too. By default you'll get a plus 3 morale bonus to AC, which is huge, but during the first round of combat also a plus 8 circumstance bonus to AC, so in total we have plus 11 to AC from this belt, and both circumstance and morale sources of AC are super rare. If you don't care for Lizard Tail's AC boost, there's always belts of physical perfection plus 6 for even higher strength, 78 instead of 76, the other scores too. For gloves, as I went with Mutation Warrior, the gloves of dueling to enhance our weapon training ability, by default it would just be plus 1. With these gloves, we can make it become plus 3 to enhance all of our natural attacks, and we have a lot of them with this build. Otherwise, before you become a legend for the fighter levels, there really isn't anything special for this slot as a shapeshifter. For boots, even if you aren't a full dexterity character, you can still go for Ronex Sacrifice. We can achieve decent enough dexterity, even with just 12 at character creation. Plus, the further bonus to armor class as a shapeshifting character are pretty nice too. Other than that, it's always going to be the boots of Stampede. For helmets, at first ones that increase wisdom, but eventually just ahead of the bitter end for the stacking bonus to AB. And then you combine it with the broken trickster glasses for a plus 6 to both wisdom and charisma. We only really need wisdom. For cloaks, honestly just settle for the cloaks of resistance with the highest modifier. I'm afraid the legend cloak is rather subpar. For rings, as always the ring of triumphant advance to double morale bonuses to AB which helps a lot because we have so many different attack types and they'll all be enhanced. And I also decided to go for the Ring of Guiding Star for the bonus to initiative. For bracers, just the bracers of armor with the highest amount as they will transfer to your wild shape AC score. Sadly, we can't get Archmage armor, the mythic ability as a legend, so we kinda have to do with the braces. Now let's get into weapons and quick slots for our Druid Legend. For the very early game, before you can become a wolf at level 4, you really want to go with either Long Spears for reach or Scimitars, both while enlarged for even higher reach. And as a Primal Druid, you'll have lots of enlarged uses. As a matter of fact, you can even convert any Druid spell you have into more enlarged person. After you get your shapeshifting forms, you don't really need any weapons as the forms you each have their own. As far as the shield, I'm pretty sure the bonus used to be added to your armor class when shifted, but I guess they finally changed that. So we only have the normal plus 4 shield here from the Angel Fortress of the Faithful spell. When it comes to quick slots, the old Grimoire is very useful for this build to add you extra slots of level 1, 2 and 3. And all of our ranger spells, well the best ones are exactly at these levels. It can help Druid too, because at the very least you'll have way more casts of Enlarged Person. The Grandmaster's Rod is just here, in case you want to use the powerful so-called Angel Orbital Strike spells as it will highly increase their damage. In the same for lesser extend rod or extend rods to extend the duration of your buffs, since we can't go for the Enduring Spells line of mythic abilities. The Trusted Friend is just here because it's a unique legend gear. It increases your charisma, but it's kinda not needed for this build. The Signet of House Whisper to you for any skill of choice. Of course, if you want to use magic device, you can also use any scrolls. And don't forget the Dragon Familiar Jarsig Axe for yet more damage on attacks. Well, alright friends, so this was it for my Druid Shapeshifter Legend Guide. If you found it useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe and even consider becoming a channel member, as you'll get to request personal videos just like this. Thank you for watching and see you next time!